back to my channel. Thanks for watching. Uh, much appreciated. So today what we're going to be doing is going over arrow functions and <clears throat> basically the five differences or some five of the top differences between arrow functions and traditional functions. So if that sounds good, then please continue watching. Also, please consider subscribing because I do videos like this. And if you like this series where I take a look at different aspects of development rather than a full project video, let me know in the comments below. And if you find this video helpful, please uh, leave a like and or a comment. And if you have any questions, please also leave that in the comments below. Uh, all right, that's it guys. So here we go, arrow functions, let's go. Okay guys, so let me just uh, quickly go over what I have here, nothing too crazy. I'm using Google Chrome. I have the console open and I'm zoomed in so you guys can see a little bit better. Over here, I'm using Visual Studio Code with a new terminal open at the bottom, and I ran npm start to start up the basic boilerplate React, uh, which I created using npx uh, create React app, and I cleaned up the files of files that we don't need, except the manifest file. Um, by the way, I do have a video a uh, previous video, which I will link in the description, where I go over everything you need to know about Create React App and how to do it. Yeah, how to work with the files. Like I said, I'll leave that in the description below. But basic, it's just a basic React uh, boilerplate, okay? So in today's video, I just want to go over a few ways uh, that we can use uh, arrow functions in React components because I just think they're very convenient. Uh, and they, you know, it, you know, they, uh, they clean up your syntax a lot, which is, uh, uh, one of the basic reasons for using them. Arrow functions came out in version ES6, JavaScript version ES6 or ES2015, sorry. Um, so, you know, I'm just going to be showing you a few different ways. Um, I'm bringing in the use state hook because we're going to be using hooks. Um, Okay, so let's get into it. So first of all, let me show you, for those of you don't, that don't know, um, let me show you what a traditional function looks like. Okay, so we start with a function. And whoops, spell it right first. Function, we'll call this greet, and we'll pass in a, a parameter. Okay, and we'll say console.log. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, template literal strings which is the little uh, accent to the left of your one key. And we'll say, hello, excuse me. And we'll put in the variable Adam. Okay, so this is a functional component technically. I'm gonna save it. And as you can see, we get an error because we never, uh, whoops. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, this should be our variable. And as you can see, don't worry about this use state. As you can see, greet is defined but never used, right? And then if we look at our thing, we get the same. Don't worry about this use state. We'll get back to that. Uh, greet is defined but never used, okay? So let's use it, right? We got to invoke the function or call it, oops, greet. And we're going to pass in a string that says Adam, as I tried to do previously and it didn't work. Uh, let's take a look at this, and as you can see, it says, hello, Adam, and the use state. Let me just get rid of that for now. We don't really need that just yet. Soon, we'll get into that. Compiled successfully. Refresh. Hello, Adam. Right? And then if we change uh, what we, we change the parameter that we pass into our, when we call our function, say, Greg. Okay, hello, Greg. Now this is a function uh, declaration, right? Um, so basically we're just creating a function. Okay, it has no name. Well, this is the name, but we're not setting it to anything. We're not setting it to a variable. However, if we were to say const greet equals function and then delete this greet here, now we have a functional function expression. And as you can, as you'll see, 
it works the same way. It's just that uh, you are, oops, sorry guys, I'm a little flustered here. Uh, it's just that we're assigning it to a variable. Now, uh, with ES6, uh, let me comment this out just so you guys have this, and I will put this on my GitHub now for arrow functions. So as you can see, you know, it, it's not a lot of code, but it's a decent amount, and we can make it better with arrow functions. Const re equals, so we're storing it in a variable, so this is a function expression. Uh, our parameters, no functional key, no function keyword, our parameters, and then our brackets. So instead of the functional keyword, we use this fat arrow, which is an equal sign in a, in a, in a greater than or equal to sign. Uh, and then in here we do console, oops, console.log, backticks, template literal strings, hello, uh, name which and then we pass in our parameter okay and then we come down here and we say greet and we'll say randy okay so let's see if that works it's compiled successfully and there we go hello randy okay uh, so as you can see it works exactly the same now also with arrow functions if you only have one parameter, you don't even need the parentheses around it, and it'll still work. I'll show you. All right? Compiled successfully, and there we go. Hello, Randy. There you go. Okay? And if it's only one line like this, if you're only doing one line, you don't even need the... Uh, the uh, curly brackets. So as you can see, now one line is instead of instead of these three lines here. Okay. But if you have more than one line of code, and I'll show you in a little bit, uh, you need the brackets, but still. Okay. So now this is one line. This is our function. This little thing here, and then we're storing it in the variable. Okay, so let's get into some real world scenarios. Uh, I will comment this out. Now let's see, let's create some state. We'll say const, uh, hmm, we'll say color, we'll say set color. Now we're creating you, uh, state with the use state hook equals use state. Uh, and we'll say blue. Okay. Now <coughs> let's come down here and create a button uh, with a class of btn btn dash primary. There you go. And we'll say change color. By the way, I forgot to mention I also have a uh, Bootstrap installed just to give the project a little flavor. Okay, so save that. Now use state is not defined because I deleted it from earlier. So we'll just bring that in. Uh, okay, so we're not doing anything with arrow functions. We're just setting something up. Okay, great. Set color is not used. That's fine. We'll get into that. Uh, I just wanted to show. Here's our button. Obviously, it does nothing. Okay, so now, as you may be aware, buttons in React have something called an on-click event. So when the button itself is clicked, it fires off an event. So anytime that the button is clicked, we can fire off the event, right? Now, so let's call this... Um, Actually, first let's let's do the sort of remedial baroque way to do it. So in our on-click event, okay, let me just move this down so we can see a little better. Uh, so in our on-click event, inside the curly breaks brackets, we're going to set a callback arrow function to that uh, set color 
uh, function that we assigned to our use state. Okay. And then we're just going to reassign it to red. And let's print it out here. Let's print out our state color. Let's see what we get. Okay. So as you can see, it's, it might be a little hard to see. Let's see if I can zoom in. There we go. So when I click the button, it changes to red. Now, it doesn't do anything after that, but if I refresh, boom. Now, let me tell you, if you if we didn't have arrow functions, you would have to do it like this. You would say this dot, oops, sorry, not time of day. Sorry, you would have to say this dot uh, set color, right? And then you'd have to come up here in the constructor and set and bind the this function. And it's a whole messy deal, right? With arrow functions, we don't have to do that now. Another thing we can do is we're going to say change. Uh, we'll say hand, we'll call this handle change. Now this is going to be the name of the function. Okay, so we're passing it in here. We're not calling it. Okay, uh, we're just simply creating it in here. Okay, so let's clear some space so you can see. Uh, and we're going to say const uh, handle change equals that. We don't need to pass anything in in this case. Okay. And we're going to say set uh, color to red. Why does it say that? Oh, sorry guys. Stupid settings on VS Code. Uh, I have Emmet also running on my VS Code. That's why it kind of allows me to uh, have little shortcuts. Okay, so let's refresh. Okay, so you see it says blue. You change it, changes to red. Okay, so that's another way to do it. So you pass in your function and then you handle it up here. Okay, let me show you another example of a function that we pass uh, using arrow functions. Okay, let me delete this. Uh, let's say we're doing a, um, a form. Let me delete this, or actually I'll comment it out so you guys can have it. Let me just comment this out so you guys can reference it. Uh, in VS Code. I'm sorry, in GitHub. Okay, create some space. And let's create a const. Uh, we'll say name. And then set name equals. Uh, if you guys want a more in-depth look at uh, React Forms, I have a couple of videos on my channel with those as well. If you want to take a look, I'll leave them in the, in the description. Uh, so we just have one piece of state for this. And let me just move this down so we have some room. And we're going to create a form. We don't need an action. Well, we do need an action, but not in that regards. Uh, and let's just do in, uh, input with a type of text to type the name. By the way, that's uh, Emmett installed that allows me to do colon text and it sets the type and let's do a button dot btn dot btn dash success it doesn't really matter it's just for looks and we'll say submit okay and we're going to give this a type of submit so we can track the event and in the form we want to say on submit on that button submit we want it to equal something. We're going to say handle form. Actually, it should be handle submit. This is our, again, just like the, just like with the button down here, just like with this on click, now we're doing it on submit because it's an event tracker. Okay. And we're going to fire off this function, which we will create up here. Okay. So again, const 
handle submit. Submit equals, this is again, an arrow function. Now I'm gonna pass in this E for event and I'll explain to you in just a second. Okay, open our brackets. Now I'm gonna do E dot prevent default. Now that's just a standard of React to stop the page from refreshing. The default action is to have, every time you submit a form, it refreshes the page, uh, but we're just stopping that, okay? No big deal, Not nothing to do with arrow functions, that's just part of React. Uh, now, since we have two lines here, we have to use the brackets, okay? We're gonna have two lines. You couldn't put this e.preventDefault and console.log all in one line, okay? We're gonna say name. Now, this isn't going to work, okay? And I'll show you why. Uh, so set name, don't worry about that. Let's take a look. Here's our, here's our form. We're gonna say Adam, submit. Doesn't work, why not? Well, we need another arrow function, okay? So when uh, we need an on change event, we need to track an event on this input. I'm just gonna put it down on the next line so you can see on change now just like the this button down here we could uh we could say handle uh whoops handle geez i can't type handle change and then do it up here but you know something that i like to do especially in the beginning when i was learning we assign a callback function and then we do set name to now we have to pass into our, our parameters into our arrow function of e for event and then do e dot target dot and get the value of what we're so this is setting name again this is not a use state hook tutorial but i'm just going through it so you, so you understand so we're using a function to set the set the name state to whatever the person types into the input field. Now it should work. Okay, so let's uh, refresh for good measure. And let's say Adam and submit. And there we go, Adam. Okay, uh, so that's that. Okay, so one other thing that I wanted to show you, I'm gonna come in here in the source, I'm gonna create another folder, I'm gonna call it comp. For components and I'm gonna say it doesn't matter this is just for an example I'm gonna say numbers.js we're gonna create a file called numbers.js I'm gonna type refce and it generates a functional component because I am using this ES7 react GraphQL react native snippets which is a um, uh, extension that I installed on VS Code and it's very helpful and allows you to do things like this. All right, now, up here, I am gonna create something, let num for numbers equal brackets. Actually, I could do this all one line, just so there's no confusion. I'm gonna say one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll go all the way up to six, we'll get crazy. All right, now we're still we're still going to work on um, arrow functions. I'm just setting it up so we can use it. Okay. Now, before we go any further, let me import import numbers from dot slash the comp folder, and then the numbers component, and then let me insert it. Down here, I am going to comment this out so you still have it. Let's imp let's put our uh, JSX in there so we get it. Save all. Uh, handle submit. Don't worry about that. Let me comment this out so you have it. Save all. Use state. That's fine. Don't worry about it. I'll leave that in there. Okay, so now, still on arrow functions, I promise. Now, let's do a JSS expression. Open up JSS expression inside the return div. You open up curly braces. Now, 
We're going to take our number array. This is an array because it has the brackets around it and stores a series of of a series of uh, characters or whatever. And we're going to do dot map, which is a high order array method to map through, kind of like a for each loop, but a little bit better. Okay, and then we're going to give each number a variable for its own. And look, this should look familiar. There's our there's our callback arrow function. Uh, I'm going to open this on a separate line. Now in a this stupid thing. Now in a map function, we use uh, parentheses. I'm going to say I'm going to open up a fragment for JS uh, for JSX. It's just something you got to do, otherwise there's an error. Uh, I'm going to start an unordered list, and then inside the list item. I am going to say, I'm going to put each number. Whoops. Sorry, that should be inside another JSS expression, N. And I'm going to assign key. And we don't need that. Don't worry about that. There'll be an error, but who cares? We're, we're not about that right now. So here is our callback arrow function, right? And you could do it like this. You could do a function. Right, whoops, function, pass in our n, and then like that. But this is just, uh, again, the syntax is just so much better here that we don't need it. And it's a lot easier to read. Okay. Don't worry about that use state. And there we go. There's our numbers array, right? So it's good. Okay, guys, so there you have it. Um, a few examples of arrow functions and how and where and why they can be used, in, especially in React, but of course they could be used all throughout JavaScript um, indiscriminately. Um, so I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please leave a like. Please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any follow up questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you very quickly. Um, and if you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. And um, all right, that's it for now, guys. If you have any video requests, please leave them in the comments below also. Appreciate it. Uh, that's it, guys. Thank you for your attention. I appreciate it. And take care. Bye.